theme, we are going to go over how to bake. That's right, bake the new Ninja Foodie Pro XL Smart Grill and Griddle. Come <laughs> up. What's up everybody? Welcome to Cooking with CJ. I'm CJ. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm so glad you're here. If you're a returning subscriber, part of CJ's crew, you know I love you. If you're new to the channel, hit that red subscribe button, that bell next to it so you get alerts on all what we do here. Guys, if you want to become part of CJ's crew for real here on YouTube, hit that join button. It'll get your name on the scroll that goes at the end of our videos. You can live forever in infamy on CJ's videos here on YouTube and you're helping out the channel. So I appreciate you. Okay, team, I've done a few videos on this new Ninja Foodie Pro XL Smart Grill and Griddle. <laughs> Still haven't got the name down right. <laughs> we'll just call it the Ninja Grill and Griddle. But one of the questions that keeps coming up is how do you bake in it? So this video is all about how you can bake in the new Ninja Foodie Grill and Griddle, okay? As you can tell, with the new grill and griddle, there is no baking pan, no no drip pan, no nothing that the, the air fryer uh, basket or the grill plate fits in, right? You have that with the, the original foodie grill, and you have that with the XL foodie grill. But now, all you have is your grill grate, right, and your griddle plate. You take that grill grate out, you're, you're, in, you're not doing no cooking, or you're going to be cleaning up a huge mess, right? So I, I set out to figure out how to bake in there. So we can go one of two ways on how to do this. The first way is the simplest and I think a pretty effective way of baking, okay? And that's to use the griddle plate. I took some chicken thighs, seasoned them up like I always do, and then I set the grill and griddle to the bake setting, put it at 375, did it for 15 minutes, start preheat, right? And I put the chicken thighs on there and just let it go. Baking it like traditional kind of roasted baked chicken in the oven. The good part about this is it's kind of like uh, the George Foreman way of doing things. There's a slant on the grill plate. So as you're baking this chicken, all the fat and uh, the grease that's being rendered out of the chicken is sliding down into the grease trap of the foodie grill and griddle. So you're getting all that grease away from your, your proteins, right? Probably one of the next videos I'm gonna do is a spatchcock chicken roasted, baked in the foodie grill and griddle, and I'm gonna use the grill plate and you're gonna see all that chicken fat's gonna be rendering out and away from that chicken. We should have a nice, crisp, clean chicken, right? So that was the easiest solution to baking in the new foodie grill and griddle, right? Hard part was for all those cake makers out there, brownie makers, you know, if you want to do some lasagna, whatever, right? You don't have an actual pan to cook in. So I went to the grocery store, I went online to Amazon, and I bought seven different pans. I was trying to you know, find the right fit for the measurements of the griddle plate and the grill pan. So it all kind of fit in there. When you're going to be using one of these, these pans to bake your, uh, well, I use cornbread in this case, you're gonna want a level surface. So you're gonna use your griddle plate on there to put your pan on to keep everything level. If you put your pan on the grill plate, like I said, there's a slant and it's going to, uh, it's gonna make your, your baking a little uneven, right? So you're gonna use your griddle plate. So you have, I was kind of going off of that. First thing I found were some little throwaway nine by six, uh, little toaster air fryer oven type throwaway pans. Those fit, they do, they fit fine. But I was looking for a little something more permanent, um, not necessarily a throwaway pan. So I went to Amazon and looked and I found some more cookie sheet, style pans that are like nine by six also. They fit, but I think we could do better, right? Next thing I went in actually into my pantry and pulled out one of my uh, barbecue prep uh, pans that I use for, you know, outside when you know, I'm doing all the pulled porks and all that stuff. And that is definitely too big. It's 11 and change by nine and change, like two inches thick and where I went, it didn't work. <laughs> the next thing I found was a little bit more of a flatter rectangular cake pan that's 12 by eight to me uh that i was hoping that would fit because the interior measurements are you know about 12 by 10 in there it didn't fit okay next item was i found an eight inch pie pan that i was hoping would fit in there but fortunately the lip on it 
on the outside of that pie pan. Uh, it just doesn't fit. When you uh, try to shut it down, it catches on the lid. Last thing I could think of was an eight by eight baking pan. So I went to the grocery store, like I said, bought an eight by eight baking pan, the little throwaway ones, and it fits, it fits perfectly. So again, I wanted to find a more permanent solution. So I found an eight by eight, a two inch deep uh, cake pan, the square, and it fits perfectly. It fits exactly how I want it to in there. I did some cornbread in there. It was uh, just a simple mix. You know, I used the box, mixed in the egg, the oil, milk. I always put a little sharp cheddar in my cornbread. I just dig the way it tastes. Uh, made some uh, honey butter with a little Uncle Steve shake, dessert shake in there, a little, little uh, cinnamony honey butter type thing going on. It's really, really tasty. But I cooked the cornbread according to the package, except I dropped it down 25 degrees. One thing I've done since the original Foodie Grill is that being that the heat is very concentrated in a small space, it's not like your oven where, you know, you, you have plenty of room, you got heated, the convection goes, you, you can put it to the actual recommended um, temperature. Um, I always back things down 20, 25 degrees. And then if it's not quite done when it says it's supposed to be done, then we let it go a little bit longer. But I find that it cooks faster in these foodie grills. So I always drop the temperature about 20, 25 degrees. Okay. And that's what I did on this one. The package recommended 375. I put it at 350. So it was, it was a really simple cook that's why this video is not necessarily on how to make cornbread in there how to cook chicken or how to bake chicken but it's this is just kind of showing you how i did it how you can do it moving forward right if you're looking for one of these eight by eight by two pans i'll put a link down below but again you can find them anywhere and everywhere like i literally got this one at the grocery store being that the heat comes from the bottom and from the top you're getting a more even cook on there batter's not being blown everywhere the air frying fan so don't worry about that um, but you got a nice even cook the cornbread turned out amazing the chicken turned out amazing um, like i said a future video is gonna be a spatchcock chicken in there again it's not big enough for a whole chicken you're gonna hit the lid if you close it uh, a whole intact chicken so when you spatchcock it meaning you take out the backbone and, and break the breastbone lay it flat it works you know it works well in there more even cook you're not touching the the heating elements or anything like that. So be on the lookout for that one. So this is this is basically what I wanted to show you, just the two ways of kind of baking in here. If you have any questions that I did not cover using the bake feature in this new grill and griddle, put them down below and I'll answer them as best as possible. But that's it on this one, guys. If you want to get yourself one of these Ninja Foodie grill and griddles, there's a link down below to Ninja Kitchen. It's an affiliate link helps out the channel, but you don't pay anything extra for it. Um, knives, cutting boards, all that good stuff, all the merch, all down below, affiliate links, check them out. If you wanna become a part of CJ's crew for real or here on YouTube, hit that join button, get your name at the end of the videos on the scroll, and it helps out the channel. Live forever in infamy here on YouTube. Listen guys, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for cooking with CJ. Take care.